Hey everyone, it's Desiree. I know, I have nothing in front of me but my hands. But that's because we're going to do something very different. I haven't done this in a while. We're going to make a scrapbook album. And it's going to be a small one, 6x6. Six six. Um, so today I'm just going to do the book, uh, the hinge system, uh, the um, base pages that go on to the hinges and then I'm going to show you what we're going to decorate this with. Now you saw with the title it has something to do with Scrappy Tales um, and we're going to focus on their new collection but let's get the book made um, if you want. I'm going to be using Recollections paper you can tell I'm just jumping right in here. Um, and again, it's I'll have to get this camera up higher just a little bit, but it'll all work once I get these together. So what I like to do is when I use my Recollections paper, you can use the 8.5 by 11. I do not suggest, um, and it was confirmed, so I'm going to have a link to a YouTube channel that is absolutely wonderful, um, Rosa Kelly Scrapbooking, and she does some beautiful albums. And the one one of the tips that I got from her um, was in regards to when you do your cover um, or make your book, basically, and also when you make your pages inside. And she talks um, about different weights and everything else and it's true it absolutely makes sense uh, with what she's saying so my outer cover for my book is 65 pounds recollection and then the pages inside the base pages are going to be 110 and again I will have her link down uh, if you are a scrapbook album maker or if you're interested in it she's got some great tutorials um, and some great items in her shop to help you with those tutorials as well. So, highly, highly encourage that. Okay, I've taken two of my sheets. I've added a half an inch of double-sided tape. And I'm going to layer these on top of each other. So I'm just going to remove that. I'm going to remove that. I will add a little bit of glue to these as well. Gives me just a little bit of wiggle room. I am going to use my mat to line these up. So I'm going to take this, line that up on my grid. And I'm just going to make sure I add glue right to that edge. And now I'm going to line this up right along that grid or that line as well. I'm going to use my paper creaser. The main tools that if, when you want to get into this or if you're looking to get into this, something to press down. So a paper creaser uh, or a bone folder um, because you want to make sure that you've got Good adhesion on these pieces. Um, you want to have a scoreboard. You want to have a trimmer that is 12 by 12 and doesn't have a break in it. And I'll show you that in a minute what I mean. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to get this lined up. And this is going to be the base page so that I can cover my chipboard. And I'm going to lay that down and again come in with the paper. Okay. So now we have our large sheet. Now you could use two 12 by 12s, whatever you have, you can use that, but this can be a lightweight. So here I've already cut my chipboard. So I've got two pieces at six 
by six, and I've got one piece six by three. And I'm going to start with the center piece. Now I'm gonna add a piece of my two inch double-sided film tape by Uline. I love this tape. It is very strong, not forgiving. And I'm just gonna put that in the center. I'm gonna barnish that down. Not that you have to, to be very honest with you. All right, so I'm gonna remove the release paper and I'm going to set my papers up. And you can see along the top there, I'm going to line them on my grid and you know, get that even. I'm gonna grab my piece of chipboard. Hopefully they won't shift. I'm gonna add some glue. Go over the tape, because that helps to wiggle just a little bit. And I'm going to place this in the center as best as I can. You don't, I don't like placing it over the folds. I wanna keep it in the center of this piece. Now we will trim this paper down and we're gonna go right there. And again, come in with your paper creaser. I also like to use a, um, this because I just forgot what the name was. <laughs> so somebody in the comments, tell me what this is again. Okay. Brayer. Got it. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing to our next two pieces. Except on one of them, I'm going to add on these, I'm going to add two pieces of the film tape. Okay, I didn't put the tape close to the edge. There's a reason. I want to be able to keep this on an angle. Now, a long time ago, and of course I can't find it now, so hang on here, I made a template. So it's a spacer template, and wow, it even has an old logo of mine for a quilting business I used to have. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up against that um, piece the center spine that we've just put and I can come in with this and you want to make sure that you're lined up and then when you place this down you will have the space that you're looking for as you continue to do this you will get better and better and be able to eyeball this And that's one down, and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then come in with the brighter again. So now we have our chipboard pieces in, we have our, our front and back and our spine hit. Now we're going to cut the excess. Now when it comes to cutting the excesses, it does not have to be perfect. I like to go anywhere between an inch to an inch and a half around my chipboard. Now the chipboard um, that I use, I just get it from Amazon and it's medium weight. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. Now the two ends that I cut off, yes, I do keep the scraps. These are great for backing. These are great for tags um, or anything else you want to think of. So I do keep them. Um, these, I may hold on if I find I don't use them, then 
I do something else with them. So now we have our piece here. We're going to cut out the corners. And you want to leave a little gap in here. I usually go about a quarter of an inch out. And you're just cutting the corner. So now we have it. See, I told you it would come into camera. <laughs> I'm going to grab our half inch double sided tape. And I'm going to put this along close to the edge. And just keep going on each side. Now that we have those in place, you want to make sure you come in, burnish those down. So these edges here, we want to wrap this paper around our chipboard, but we've got to, got to make our work first. So what I like to do, some pull them up. What I like to do is grab the opposite side, keeping my pieces flat and just slowly bending these pieces up. Yes, you're going to hear cracking. It's okay. And then I really bring it towards me on an angle there. And now that paper's sitting up so that I can work it with my thumbs and again, small movements because you're breaking every fiber possible. Now that I did that, I'm going to come back in and now I'm just going to bend it down and then grab it. Now that that's bent, we've got the movement. I'm going to remove the release paper. And I'm going to put glue and I'm going to go into that corner that we have overhanging. That's an awesome noise for you. And then I am going to go over that tape and we're going to pull up. Always start in the center and then we're going to keep edging it. That tape helps just on the edge to make it grab. Push it down. Now on the edge of the chipboard, I'm gonna take my paper creaser, it could be a ruler, and just bend that down. It's almost like you're scoring that paper. Because when we fold in the sides, that's going to fold in for us. And I'm going to do that on this side as well. Okay, now we're going to do the sides and pretty much it's the same thing. Now these are usually a little more manageable so you can use your hands. Since this is, since this is 16 inches high, we're going to be able to do that. But I do like to curve it just to get that initial. It's almost like scoring it. And then I like to turn it over to see, okay, did this come out? Now this here is sticking out just a little bit. I'm going to see if I can get that pushed down and even with the book. I cannot, which is fine. I'm going to grab a pair of small scissors and I'm just going to come in on an angle 
and cut that away. And now she's not overhanging. This one's kind of doing the same thing. Again, coming in on an angle, cutting away. All right, that side's done. Let's do the other. Okay, so that is the outer shell of our scrapbook album. Now the last thing that we have to do is we have these openings here. So we just want to form a score line in the center of them. And you don't want to press too hard, but you want to make sure that we get that curve. I'm going to place my edge, whatever you're using, whether it's a ruler or anything like that, in there, and I'm going to slowly start bending up my panel. You want to go slow. I like to do these panels first because they're dry by the time I get to this. If this is not dry and you can let it set for some time, what might happen is you might get bubbles running through this. So that's why let it dry but slowly bring it up. Don't and you just want to keep wiggling it. Heard that? It's a crack, but that's okay. Nothing's lifted. What's happening is this paper is going down into that side and that's okay. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And that is our album cover. Now, <clears throat> make sure that you have your marks on the side here because now we're going to do um, a hinge system where we're gonna put our pages down on to this. It's not gonna be something that I'm sewing. I'm still using the 65 pound paper getting my cutter here so before I said when it comes to your cutter you want to make sure that it's 12 inches and that there's no break and this is what I mean you want a cutter that's like this however it is whether it's a blade that you slide up and down whether it's a guillotine whatever you feel comfortable with me personally this is my choice i do have you know another paper trimmer but there is a break right about the six and a half six and three quarters and there's a lot of times where you need those measurements you've got to make sure that in scrapbooking that you're cutting the way you cut each time so that's why i just go with this this is the westcott trim air and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece that is five and a half and then by the, the length. And again, if you go to Rosa Kelly, she even has a tutorial on this part here. I'm going to be changing everything after that. And you always want to check your pages. They may say that they're eight and a half by 11. After you make your first cut, make sure you have that same cut made um, because paper could be a little bit out of line and we've all seen that before. Okay. So for our hinge, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be scoring every three quarters of an inch going across this so that we can create the hinge portion and you're going to do it along the long edge and I need this so I'm going to put this up and every three quarters
and that's what our panel looks like. It's okay that I went out. You're not going to see it, so don't stress. No stress. Now we're just going to create our hills and our valleys. We're going to let that flat. All right, for this, I'm gonna be putting a double-sided adhesive in the centers here of the valleys that we've created right now because I turned it over. Gonna close them up, and then we're gonna bring this to our album. And that's what this looks like, but we're gonna work it. You wanna keep working these, get them used to bending backwards, and don't be scared of them. So that's what we've got. And now we're going to put this into our book. First, I'm going to add some double-sided tape down the center of this piece. I'm not worried about going from edge to edge and I'm just going to put this close to the outside on the ends. Before and whenever you work, or whenever we work with double-sided tape, always check your piece first. Get used to how this is going to lay into your book. You want these four pieces centered within the three inches, and you want this whole compartment centered within the six inches. Now again, we cut this at five and a half, so we're gonna have a quarter up here and a quarter down here. Once you feel comfortable, you want to remove your release paper and we're going to get this set in and then once we get this set in we will be moving on to the images that are going to be used in the papers um, and stuff like that so we're going to focus on the coloring die cutting, and all of that stuff. So a little bit different setup of a video, but I think it'll be fun. I'm gonna put a bead of glue here, 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 here. I'm gonna wiggle in here and wiggle a little bit out here. You have glue glue, sometimes it helps with the warping. Not much. All right, I get up on my tippy toes going to get this lined up in my grid and I'm going to hope for the best. Okay, she's down. You can see put glue on top of double-sided tape. Sabrina taught me that. I definitely learned that from her. And now we just want to make sure that we push down and get this in, get that settled. 
you always want to varnish down your pieces to make sure that you have good connection. And again, I used to make these eons ago and I've just missed them. All right, we have this in now, but you notice we've lost our bend. We cannot bend our book. Just means you've got to come back in with your straight edge. Start a little bit from the top, a little bit from the bottom, and you're just going to keep on coming down until you meet to just faintly put that in. Now, I want to let this dry because there's a lot of glue, a lot of tape in here, and I don't want this to buckle, but I want the line at least started so that the paper knows I will win. So there it is. There's our book. Again, I'll bend it a little bit later, but I want to let this section dry completely. Don't worry about these. We'll be covering them. So you can see we're going to have a six by six book or album with a three inch spine. Now you can use, um, your pattern papers. That's, that's what is always done. You know, we use our pattern papers, but you know, we have so many other items that we have at our disposable. We are card makers. We are paper crafters. And the beauty of our world is we have dyes, so we can make our own die cut pieces. We can stamp our own images and make our own die cut piece. We can do all of this. And I'm going to do just that. And I'm featuring Sabrina's collection of the set sale. Okay, so set sale collection here. She has this beautiful six by 8.5 paper pad. Now, yes, this is, <laughs> it was in one of her kits, but I just love these papers. And these are perfect for that album because the largest piece that I would be cutting since it's a six by six is a five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So this is going to be perfect. We're going to have some pelicans. We're going to create some backgrounds. We're going to have some beautiful swordfish. I believe that's, we're going to try to put a section of that lighthouse in. We've got stamps that we're going to color, dyes. Not sure if I'm going to be using the stencils, but you never know. They may come in. I'm going to fall in love with these shells here. Unfortunately, I'll be able to create uh, borders, but this is a five by seven. Um, frame. We've got some anchors, we've got portholes, we've got wheels, the birds, beautiful bottle. Again, would not be able to use this fully, but I can use sections of it, which I think are perfect. We've got our fence and our beach, our rope, and another stamp set. So with all of this, we are going to have our pattern paper, but create our own ephemera with what is here, um, with our stamps and our dies. And this collection to me, when I first saw it, it's the first thing that I actually saw. So it's perfect. Um, I think it's going to be something that's going to be amazing. All right. So that's our first <laughs> video here. Um, the next video is either going to be all of the stamping and then the coloring or the die, color, uh, die cutting and the assembly. Um, either way, I'll talk in the beginning of it and then you'll just be able to sit back and relax and watch the coloring. I have not decided if I'm going to use my colored pencils or alcohol markers. Let me know in the description what would you like to say. Um, but I have the feeling I am going to lean towards my colored pencils. All right, here's our book. I just wanted to real quick show you. It has dried. 
I'm going to push these out of the way. Again, putting that into the crease. Let me turn this around. Putting this into the crease and slowly pulling her up. Don't go crazy. Just And notice how you're not hearing too much cracking. That means she's drying. Again, those pieces that are underneath this, they're just sticking. That little bit of tape is just catching. Again, lifting her up slowly, pushing back and forth as if you're scoring it. And I know I'm shaking my camera, I apologize. And slowly pull her in. Now, when I leave these alone before I start adding anything to them, I will actually put these in between two other books of mine about three quarters of the way and let that sit there so that it can know the shape. Because right now, if I leave it go, it just flings out. I want it to understand the shape and you don't want to push in on these corners here to make that happen. Um, and you don't want to overstress the paper um, by constantly doing that. So that's how I'll store this and then I just go back and forth on these. You should be able to just swipe back and forth so that the paper knows what it's doing. It will like one side better than the other, like mine like this way better. That's why I get hung up coming this way. But as you keep doing that, you're going to build yourself to be able to do this. And that's what you want. Not constantly, but it's fun. Yeah, it's a paper cruise ball. Think of it that way. All right. So these videos are going to be long. Um, I may be gabbing through them. So some of you have been saying you miss my gab. God bless you. <laughs> but I'm really going to enjoy this. And I am looking forward to this project. So stay tuned. If you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe. Uh, hit the thumbs up. Get ready for parts two, three, and possibly four or five. Um, of this series and it's going to run the entire month in July. All right, so this will be done by the end of July and along the way I'll have a few other projects using these items as well. But please make sure you subscribe, thumbs up, make sure you ring the bell so that you can be notified of these and also when you can be notified for when I come in with my announcement and some changes that are going to be coming in. Um, they're all good and um, a launch. So I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Enjoy the art that you uh, create. I hope you will join me on this journey. This will be fun. Um, I know I enjoy that. See, you can't stop doing this. Um, and again, I will have Rosa Kelly scrapbooking link uh, YouTube channel down below. Please go check her out if this is something that you're interested in. She does a great job with her tutorials um, and she has so much to offer for her customers. All right. I will be talking soon. Love your art. Know it's your art. Enjoy it. But remember what's most important to me. Always be creative, guys. And I can't wait to talk to you in the next one. Till then.